Hey, welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about the future price of XRP and how forecasting that is actually a little more complicated due to the nature of being a utility asset. We're going to talk about this concept called the virtuous cycle, which is pretty neat, a little bit complicated. I'm going to do my best to break it down simply and go talk about sort of the future of this asset and kind of how we see it playing out. Hello, Molly Elmore. Today we're going to talk about the price of XRP in the future, not soon. We're kind of trying to forecast it out a couple of years uh, to serve a couple of different tasks that I'm involved with. So I'm part of Jimmy Valley's XRP buyback confidential committee, and I'm on one of the smaller subgroups that is tasked with actually figuring out how to value this asset. And it's kind of, it's very neat project, it's hard. <laughs> Uh, and yesterday, Jimmy explained to me this concept of a virtuous cycle and how it plays into XRP, XRP specifically and the future of this, this asset. Now, this is a little bit of a complicated topic. So I'm going to do my best to break it down simply. I did also write a Twitter thread about it, which I'll put in the description if you prefer to read versus watch a video. Uh, and one of the, the neat things about this subgroup is that there's some really smart people in there. I uh, you know, I've took math classes my entire life, more math than 99% of people that I know. But I found the like 1% of people who are totally blown me away in terms of math ability. So there's some pretty cool things coming out of this group. And it will be neat to see the final sort of model we use to value this asset it's going to be used for a couple different purposes, which I'll probably break down again in a different video. But for now, we're kind of coming up with the best methodology to figure out how to price XRP. And this could theoretically apply to other assets, but I don't know of any other asset that really has the specific set of use cases right now that XRP does. All right. So what is this idea of a virtuous cycle? So if you've ever studied anything around the compound effect, you know that or you know, savings rates, you know, that things kind of start to look linear. Like, you know, you, you add up, you go up the stairs one at a time. But in many cases, you can increase exponentially as you kind of hit this certain threshold. Sometimes easier to visualize the opposite of a virtuous cycle, which is called a death spiral. So if you've ever kind of been a part of something that's just falling apart, it seems like one thing happens and the next thing happens and it just sort of like, accelerates to this point of total chaos and destruction. That's the, the negative direction for this. But imagine the opposite where as things keep building up and going around in cycles, it amplifies and takes off like a rocket exponentially. And that's the idea what we're going to talk about here. So XRP has been held back, as we know, due to this SEC lawsuit. But at some point, hopefully in the near future, that will end and XRP will enter the marketplace with its intended use case for now, which is cross-border payments. So banks are going to start to use XRP to send money to other banks. And that will make that process much faster and less expensive. And businesses love efficiency because who doesn't want to improve their bottom line, especially if it's something that works really well. So what will likely happen is after the banks kind of do their thing and it becomes evident to the broader business markets that this type of tool, like using a digital asset to send value quickly, is a really good idea. And so new businesses, new categories of businesses will start to adopt this. And then new businesses that don't exist yet because the current payment system is inefficient, new businesses will pop up to fill this sort of opportunity in the market. This is called Jevon's Paradox. I wrote a thread on it. I think I did a video on it. I'll put those in the description. But the idea with Jevon's par Paradox is that you would think that if something becomes more efficient, meaning you need less of something to complete a task, then less of that thing overall would be consumed. This kind of came up in a long time ago, 1800, I think, in, in U the UK with coal. They were trying to figure out how to get everybody to use less coal. So they made some efficiency in coal processing or coal usage. 
thinking that, okay, cool, the net result of this is now we'll use less coal. But instead, coal became now a more cost efficient resource. So new businesses that weren't using coal before started to use coal. And so it actually ended up increasing overall consumption as that particular thing became more efficient. So that is expected to happen with XRP as well. As XRP solves problems in the market that are not efficient right now, and most payments, most moving money around is not efficient because it's using very old school methods. Once that becomes efficient, then all these businesses using some other system or businesses that don't exist will pop up and enter the market, therefore increasing the use of XRP. And so what this will do is slowly drive up the price as more entities, let's say, use XRP for payments, then the price goes up because it is more in demand and people are buying it to have for that purpose. Now, what happens when the price goes up is that people who have profit or wealth to store need a place to store it. Everybody needs some kind of vehicle to store value for, for the long term or even short term. Think about like a savings account. Like you don't need the money right now. You got to park it somewhere. Hopefully it's not going to lose value. And that has been the problem with the dollar for a while is that if you hold your money in dollars due to inflation, it's actually losing value over time. So if XRP starts to get adoption, goes up in price because it's all of this utility, then people who are looking for a good place to store value will say, hey, XRP, it's, it's gaining adoption. It's going up in price. I got to store my wealth somewhere. This looks like a good place to store my wealth. So what happens is, is that more and more, I'm going to call them people, but it's probably going to be businesses and countries and in, institutions. More and more of these people are going to take XRP out of the market and store their wealth in it so that they have a place to kind of keep it protected and safe. And the consequence of that is now there's less XRP available for this transaction side. And what happens when you have less availability and you still have the same amount of demand? The price goes up. And now this, this is what the virtuous cycle is. We start to see, okay, now the price has gone up. Now more and more people want it. Now it becomes more attractive as a store of value as that price continues to increase. Now there's less in the marketplace for the transactions. And now it goes up again and more and more people are going to store value. And it becomes this flywheel where instead of just going at a steady rate, it accelerates. And that's this idea of exponential growth. You could call it accelerating growth. But the idea is that it doesn't just go at this like steady pace of like, you know, 2% a year. It, it goes 2%, 4%. 8%, 12%, whatever, it goes up and up and up. And what's kind of interesting about this is it ties into another concept called Moore's Law, which is that as technology becomes less expensive, growth and adoption can accelerate. We definitely saw this with flat screen TVs. You might not be old enough to remember this. When flat screen TVs came out, they were insanely expensive. They were like $20,000. And it was a, a very much an early adopter, like special novelty purchase. And not a whole lot of people had them in the beginning because $20,000 for a TV is, is a chunk of change. But as the technology became cheaper, a lot cheaper, the adoption like blew up. I think we're, I mean, it's very rare to go into a house that has a TV now and it's not a flat screen TV. And that was part of an, uh, a pretty dramatic accelerated growth adoption once the price dropped dramatically. So let's go back to XRP and payments. Right now, moving money around the globe, if you're going to use like a wire transfer, even ACH, it's expensive. Can't really make a lot of payments without there being a, a cost there. Well, what happens if payments becomes almost free? Like the cost is just such a fraction of a penny. You have this advent of micropayments. You have totally new models that, that didn't really have payments. Maybe they had some other type of arrangement or they, this business didn't exist. And now you're going to have all these entities entering the market because moving money around and sending payments is now this incredibly fast and cost-effective tool. And so when the cost goes down dramatically, like we saw with flat screen TVs, the usage and adoption will increase exponentially. So that's the idea that it's going to it's going to probably start out a little bit slow because we're not going to have that ton of adoption like on day one, 
But as it grows and grows and grows and the price goes up, this competing force enters the market between the people who want to use XRP to store value and those who need it for transactions. And as they compete with each other while the price goes up, it's where you have this like spiraling thing that goes up in this case versus the death spiral where it would go down. There is a point though, where it like goes to the moon. I know that's a, a common uh, analogy used in the sort of crypto world, but I actually am meaning that sort of literally in this case in that, you know, we see this exponential growth and then it's like, boom, shoots up almost like a straight line. And this relates to this concept that I also am recently learning about called singularity, which is a futuristic AI type scenario planning where the path that humanity is on regarding AI technology is that in a couple of years, computers will be smarter than people. And in a couple more years after that, I think we got maybe 10 or 15 years to the next one, computers become smarter than all the people together. And when I first sort of heard about this, my like Skynet Terminator, like alarm bells were like, ding, 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 ding. Because, uh, you know, that didn't end well in the movies. Now, that doesn't mean it has to go that way. Hopefully we can be more responsible and avoid that path. Or I'm just going to get on a timeline that doesn't go that way. All right, let's just say it, we don't have this kind of scenario. Things go well. Singularity concept kind of takes humanity to a, to a place where our computer technology kind of works for us and like does all the stuff, does all the work, takes care of all the things. And we can kind of live a very different type of life that almost seems unimaginable at this stage because all of us kind of grew up in this kind of working model where you sort of went and got a job, you did all this stuff, you made money and you paid bills and did all these things. And so to imagine like what a world would exist without all that stuff is a little difficult to picture. But this is kind of where the singularity idea could head. And it might be a minute, I, you know, we'll see if, <laughs> Uh, if any of us get to see that, but there are also these like incredible advancements in like health related things where you kind of immortality live forever. If you're kind of curious about that, go see some of the later on alien movies <laughs> that covered this like Prometheus after and after that. Uh, but the idea would, you know, have this pretty cool advanced technology that would allow you to kind of live forever. Maybe you move to a new body. I don't know. I'm totally getting off topic here, but uh, this idea of singularity is the point where the technology kind of takes over well, in a good way. We'll just go with that for now in a good way. And all the sort of stuff that humans have to do that, you know, we've convinced ourselves, give us character by doing, having work ethic, whatever. Imagine a world where it was just so dramatically different and none of those things existed because the computers did all the stuff. Well, a subset of that is XRP. And XRP adoption could, or maybe will, escalate via this singularity concept to the point where the entire kind of financial system like just runs by itself. And all the people who are doing like administrative tasks and, you know, kind of low level decision making, they just get replaced and get to move on to other different types of things in this next version of our economy. Maybe they can have a YouTube channel instead of working in the accounts receivable at the DTCC. Who knows? This also kind of even ties into the, the fact that some more advanced decision making will be replaced. I mean, that's sort of one of these interesting ideas that I have not fully figured out is let's say this advanced AI stuff becomes so sophisticated that every single job <laughs> is done by AI. Like, I don't know what the people are going to do all day. That's my next question. Try to figure that out. Sort of like, I guess you're just on vacation. Maybe you grow vegetables. I don't know. You have a farm. I'm not really sure what, what we're supposed to do. We have some time to figure that out. For now, we're just trying to forecast the price of XRP. And looking at the trajectory towards singularity is kind of part of that particular exercise. All right. So to go back to this virtuous cycle. So the idea is that as adoption starts and we see that utility for XRP takes off, there's going to be the entering into the market of two competing forces. 
So as people are using the asset for transactions, then we start to see that the price goes up and then other people or the same people see that this increasingly used asset with an increasing price might be a cool place to store value. So they start to pull XRP out of the market, put it in their digital vault. And now there's less supply for those transactions, which further drives up the price. Now more people are interested in storing value and create this cycle. And it gets to the point where adoption due to the uh, Jevons paradox and Moore's law start to now increase the demand for this asset so much that more and more gets taken out of the supply that it creates this insanely high trajectory. I mean, this is the whole idea of the exponential growth is that you have competing forces that are driving up the price and then pulling out the supply, which drives up the price and new use cases come in, drives up the price, which makes more people want to pull some out to store value. And now you have this incredibly highly valued asset. So if you think about how few use cases are in place right now and how few will be in place initially, even if all, let's say all the banks started to use XRP for cross-border payments, that's that's nothing compared to like every other business that sends payments. I mean, think about every company that has payroll, think about every transaction you have at a store, like every stock purchase, every bond purchase, like there's a lot of payments and transactions that go on in the world. Let's say that eventually all of them move to this environment and increase exponentially. Now you could make the argument that like, maybe not every transaction in the world is gonna run the XRP ledger. They, that is true. I don't know that to be the case, but this for this exercise, we're making that assumption. Let's say XRP does become the one platform where essentially all the money is moved, meaning every single payment of every sort essentially is now done via this asset. And there's new use cases that, again, remember I said, Jevons paradox when something becomes much more efficient, things that we haven't even thought of yet are going to enter the market and also compete for that asset. And then all this competition drives up the price and all the people who want to store wealth somewhere, they now are going to pull XRP out of the market, park it so that the supply of XRP shrinks and shrinks and shrinks as demand goes up and up. And it's like this perfect storm for like a price increase. So if you think about it, this idea of XRP being, you know, it's, I think it's very artificially suppressed right now. So let's just say for argument's sake that the real price of XRP right now is supposed to be $10. That it's being suppressed because of SEC and the fact that it's difficult to get in a lot of places. So let's just say argument's sake, it's supposed to really be $10. If you think about this amplification of use and then competing force to pull value out of the market, you know, to go to $100 and then 1,000 and 10,000, like that's the whole idea of exponential growth is you go from like 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000. And the price will reflect this trajectory of exponential acceleration. Where does the price end? I don't know. That's hard. High, way higher than I think we could possibly imagine via cognitive dissonance, making this whole thing a little bit difficult to believe in one, one regard. But the idea is that the growth of XRP in terms of price won't likely be linear. I mean, linear, like, you know, straight line. It's going to likely be exponential, meaning it goes on a curve and like shoots up to the moon. How quickly will that happen? I don't know. Part of it depends on this lawsuit and the adoption, but I mean, the lawsuit has to end at some point. It's been two, almost two years. I think it's been over two years. Uh, so we'll see if by March of this year, that's my hopeful, optimistic prediction that it would definitely be done by March, but we'll see. Regardless, in the grand scheme of things, a couple of months is not very long for this massive paradigm shift to a completely new way that payments are made. And this idea of the virtuous cycle kind of feeding this market with a couple of different very interesting dynamics, increased usage, decreased supply, increased price, kind of creates this perfect storm of exponential growth. All right, <laughs> that's it. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.